Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome to another Arbin Hardware video. And in this video, we're gonna put together this $1,200 gaming PC with an RTX 3070. Now we're gonna go over the whole uh, process, the whole installment, and we're gonna go over each and every PC component I picked and why these PC component play nice together. Now if you find anything you like, all items are linked up down below. We're also going to boot the machine up and we're gonna look at what PC performance and frame rate you can expect in case you decide to build this PC too and you'll find timestamps for the benchmark down below. Alright guys, so for today's build we're gonna make use of the MSI B450, this is the Tomahawk Max. We're gonna pair it with a Ryzen, the Ryzen 7 3700X. This is an 8-core processor with 16 threads and it's going to work fantastic for this PC build. We're gonna make use of these slippery 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Uh, these are super fast RAM sticks and yeah, as you guys can see, they're coming from Corsair. This is their LPX series. Last but definitely not least, we're gonna use the stock cooler that comes included with the CPU and the thing with this cooler is, it is actually really not that bad and it also got some well needed RGB as well. So first thing we're gonna do now is that we're gonna unbox uh, the motherboard and we're gonna install our CPU in its socket. So this is the MSI B450 Tomahawk. And while opting for AMD's all new B550 motherboards with support for upcoming CPU releases would have been a cool idea, B550 chipset are unfortunately quite expensive and therefore I ended up picking the Tomahawk B450 coming in at just over $100. Now Tomahawk Max comes with all the bells and whistles you need such as 6 fan headers, great VRMs, USB 3.1 Type-C as well as M.2 and it even supports future Ryzen processors through an update releasing in 2021. Now installing the processor is simple, locate the golden triangle, the triangle lines up with a triangle on our motherboard socket, simply turn the CPU so that the triangles match up, open the metal arm, drop the processor into the socket, then put the metal arm down and our CPU is installed. Now inside the box we also find the heatsink, this is actually a pretty powerful one and it isn't that noisy either. Now in case you aren't interested in doing, you know, heavy overclocking and whatnot, the included stock cooler is actually more than enough. And the cooler installment is pretty simple. In case you're installing the cooler for the first time, there should be a thin layer of pre-applied thermal compound pre-installed. Otherwise, you need to apply a bit of compound on the CPU first. Position the processor cooler on the CPU so that the retention clips on each side of the heatsink align with the socket mounting lugs. On the retention frame of the motherboard, now carefully push down the retention clips one at a time until both clips are hooked onto the socket mounting lugs and some force may need to be applied. Adjust the cam lever position to lock the CPU cooler to the retention frame. Lastly, yeah, we connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Now we're almost done with our motherboard, the only thing missing is our RAM sticks and for today's build I ended up picking these dual RAM sticks from Corsair, these are called Vengeance LPX and each RAM stick got 8GB so we got 16GB in total. Now to get as much performance and FPS as possible, I did pick fairly high clocked RAM sticks for today's build. So simply pull back the clips for the second and the fourth DIMM slot and simply plug them in just like so. Very easy right and now we can finally begin the real fun by installing the motherboard in our chassis. And for today's build, yeah, we're gonna make use of the Li An Li Long Call 2. This is by far the best budget mid-tower chassis that I personally ever built in so far. It comes in at 87 bucks and it got everything you would expect from a case at this price point, plus yeah, a lot more. Now we find RGB in the front with large mesh ventilation strips for optimized airflow. The case comes with three 120 fans pre-installed, tempered glass on both sides that are mounted on hinges and dust filters on every air intake and overall the whole case feels very expensive and the long cool 2 comes either black or white. 
Now in order to get access to the inside of our chassis to install our motherboard we need to open the flip shroud that is held in place by magnets and after that we can then open the side panel just like so. Now by having the CPU cooler already installed we can just grab on to the CPU cooler we can then gently slide the motherboard into place and this can be done either by having the case standing up or having it laying down. Now, I actually prefer having it laying down and if you decide to put it down just like me, I do recommend that you first remove the temper glass side panels. Now we secure the motherboard by using the screws that comes provided from Lee and Lee. Now I figured it would be a good idea to install our chassis cables that takes care of the front audio, USB as well as the power button etc. Let's start with the USB. This connector is quite wide and the cable is quite thick and I would say it's almost impossible to miss. Simply route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. And the connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Next up we got front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly we got the front panel connectors and you find these on the lower right side. This can be a bit tricky but yeah just take your time here. Now for power supply we're gonna use the Corsair CV550, this is 550 watts, this is a high quality power supply with 80 plus bronze efficiency with a price tag coming in at just 58 bucks. Now when you're installing this you wanna make sure that you got the fan facing downwards, then you gently wanna slide it into place and secure it. So there are a couple of cables we're gonna need here. First up we got the 24 pin power connector for the motherboard. This one goes to the connector on the mid left side. Next up got the 8 pin power for our CPU. And this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Now it is time to install our SSD and for today's build I ended up picking the Kingston A400 with 960GB of storage. Now while this isn't the fastest SSD around, it is still very fast compared to old traditional mechanical spinning hard drives. It is also smaller and it's also completely silent. Now in order to install it we're gonna use one of these two SSD brackets held in place by a thumb screw. After securing the SSD with 4 screws provided by Lee and Lee, we can put the bracket back in place and lock it in. We need to plug in the SATA cable that comes provided with our Tomahawk motherboard. And we also gonna need the SATA power connector coming from our power supply. Then route the SATA cable through one of the routing holes and plug it into the motherboard. Now it is time to plug in our graphics card and for today's build I ended up picking the brand new Nvidia Ampere based GeForce RTX 3070 with 8 gigs of blazing fast GDDR6 memory, fast enough for silky smooth, 1440p gaming and even 4K. Yeah, should be possible. Now this particular card is coming from Asus, it is called Dual OC and it comes with dual actual fans, a protective backplate as well as a BIOS switch that lets you toggle between quiet and the performance profile to your liking. Now with an MSRP of 499 the RTX 3070 is the ultimate price to performance graphics card ready for ray tracing enabled games such as Cyberpunk 2077. Now in order to install a graphics card we need to take out two of these upper PCIe slots and then we can just gently slide in a graphics card just like so. Plug in our PCIe cables and our graphics card is now installed. Now we just flip the case around, we put the shrouds back on that is hiding all the cables, we then put the temper glass back on its hinges and we have now officially completed our $1200 gaming PC build. Let's turn on our system and see how it performs. First up we got the Vision 2 starting with 1080p with Ultra and everything pretty much maxed out. 
The RTX 3070 is averaging about 140 FPS with 110 FPS at 1% low. Now at 1440p with the same settings we're seeing almost 100 fps on average and even at 4k we're able to run the game above 60 fps on average. Battlefield 5 is next and we're starting with 1080p and we're using the ultra preset and as we can see we're averaging well above 150 fps and at 1440p we are seeing 130 fps on average and if you decide to go for 4k yeah you can expect to see over 60 fps on average very very cool gears 5 is up next and again we're aiming high using the ultra graphics presets and this results in an average of around 120 fps for the rtx 3070 for this build and jumping over to 1440p we're seeing numbers quite close to the three digit mark at 4k we're able to almost reach 60 fps and so if you scale back on the graphics settings just a slight bit hitting 60 fps won't be a problem for the rtx 3070 70. Last up guys, we got Red Dead Redemption 2 running on the Vulkan API at ultra settings and at 1080p we're seeing over 80 FPS on average and moving on to 1440p and we are once again seeing quite high numbers for being Red Dead Redemption 2 and over 70 FPS on average is what you can expect. Lastly at 4k, yeah this is where things start to get a little bit shaky with an average of 49 FPS yet yeah, the game still runs fairly smooth but yeah, I do recommend that if you're gonna play at 4K, there might be a good idea to scale back on the graphics just a slight bit. Now again guys, all PC components can be found down below. Now I am starting up a Discord server and it would be amazing if you guys wanted to join and start discussing PC builds and issues and yeah, I'm gonna hang out there and answer every question you guys might have so definitely join the discord server you find the link down below now watch either of these two videos and i will see you guys in the next video